Okay, my people, let's talk about some terminology associated with the trapezoid. Uh, what do we have? Well, this is a trapezoid, I can tell, because we have one pair, not two, exactly one pair of opposite sides are, are parallel. They're not congruent, they are just parallel. And notice we have some terminology for these two sides. These are always going to be considered the bases. So even though I use the same color here for base one and base two, the top and bottom, I'm not saying they're congruent. I'm saying they're just bases and that we do know they are parallel to one another. And if those are the base sides in here by um, how we define and label uh, the terminology for trapezoids, we have some base angles. But I'm gonna use some different color in here. Uh, we have these two base angles, and we have this base angle uh, being a base angle, and we have this one being a base angle as well. So it turns out sometimes these base angles are congruent, sometimes they're not. It turns out if we had an isos what we call an isosceles trapezoid, some of these base angles turn out to be the same. But in just an ordinary trapezoid, it turns out that there's a relationship between these two base angles. They're going to be supplementary based upon these two sides being parallel. And these two sides in here, they're going to be supplementary as well because those are all same side interior angles. Well, we have two more words in here. Uh, excuse me, one more word in here we've got to explore, and that's uh, we're talking about the leg. I'm going to use one color for this leg in here, and I'm going to use a different color for this leg in here. And so these are the legs. These are the non parallel sides of a trapezoid and I use two different colors to showcase that uh, these two sides are not guaranteed to be the same they could be the same in that case uh, they would be an isosceles trapezoid but don't be fooled that all legs of a uh, trapezoid are congruent that's not the case it's only when it's isosceles and what does it mean to be isosceles that would mean uh, that this particular um, side in here on the right hand side is the same length as the side um, across from it. And so now based upon the tick marks this would be an isosceles trapezoid. So let's take a look at the amazing uh, properties and tick marks of an isosceles trapezoid. So I have put all the tick marks in here. Hopefully you can pause this video and duplicate this and hopefully you could see a pattern between uh, all these triangles in here and the left to right symmetry that I see. I'm going to kind of showcase this right here by drawing in this little axis to symmetry. Hopefully you can see the left to right symmetry as you analyze both sides of this isosceles trapezoid. And when it's isosceles, look at everything that is going to be congruent from a left to right perspective in here. And I'm going to keep on highlighting these tick marks. Look, this little segment and that segment's congruent. And ooh, do you see an isosceles triangle anywhere? And this segment is going to be congruent to that segment. And ooh, do you see an isosceles triangle anywhere? Take a look at that. Um, we do have other triangles in here. We'll discuss more about that in a second. Let's talk about more about the tick marks. Well, I see that this angle is congruent to that one. I see that this angle is congruent to that one. Start to notice the left to right symmetry. This angle is congruent to that one. And notice what color I'm going to use again. This angle is congruent to that one. So notice I'm going to put four numbers here. One, two, three, and four. All four of those have the same exact color and the same exact tick marks. Not these other angles, but these four in particular. And why would these four uh, be uh, all the same or congruent? Well, they are alternating interior angles that we learned a long time ago. And remember, once we have parallel lines, if I draw a transverse on here, that is a set of alternating interior angles. So hopefully you can see 
uh, that angles 1 and 4 are alternating interior angles, and 2 and 3 are also alternating interior angles. So I'm going to raise some of this uh, so far because I've really tried to highlight um, the left to right symmetry. Also, it might be really obvious that these two angles are congruent as well. They're vertical as well. So I'm going to erase all these tick marks in here and try to analyze the triangles that are created by um, the diagonals. Here are the diagonals. Uh, the triangles created by the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid. Well, I mentioned before that these two are the same, and I tried to preview that that triangle is isosceles as well. And that makes sense. Look at the tick marks for the angles. And I tried to mention before that, a preview, that that triangle is isosceles. So, so far I've analyzed two of what we call the eight triangles all together. There are eight triangles. Hopefully you can see all eight. Um, so, so far we have two of them, the top one and the bottom one, the blue one and the green one. And what do they have in common? They are isosceles triangles. Well, let's focus on uh, two additional triangles in here, the one on the left-hand side and the one on the right-hand side. And these do not turn out to be isosceles, but they have something else uh, in common. If you take a look real close, um, there for a number of reasons, uh, let's call it side, 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 for example, those two triangles are congruent. So we have four triangles we have analyzed so far. We have the top one and the bottom ones. We've discovered those are isosceles. In fact, as a little preview, uh, they turn out to be similar triangles. And the left to right triangles, triangles three and four, they turn out to be congruent. Well, we have four more triangles to analyze, and they're a little tougher to see. What you got to see is the overlapping ones. So I'm going to showcase this blue triangle in here and this green triangle in here. So those two triangles are overlapping, and what do we know about those two triangles? Well, those two triangles are congruent for a number of reasons based upon the tick marks. Let's call it uh, side angle side or angle angle side. There's a, a bunch of reasons why they're congruent, but those two triangles, I'm going to call those triangles five and six, those are congruent triangles. Well, there's two more triangles to kind of break down and see in here. And which two are they? Well, they're the toughest two to see. That's this triangle in here and this triangle in here. That's triangle seven and eight, and if you take a look and pause it and take a look at their tick marks, it turns out those two triangles are congruent as well. So we have all these overlapping triangles. We have congruent triangles. We have isosceles triangles. We have angle sum theorem with 180 degrees. We have alternating interior angles. We have vertical angles. We have linear pairs. We have all this geometry colliding within this beautiful shape in here and all the symmetry associated with isosceles triangles and this little mirror image down the center. So hopefully this has been some help for you to kind of break down the beauty and the symmetry uh, of an isosceles triangle. See you soon.